Hey, hey, everyone. This is the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. I'm back doing another episode of Where Are They Now? And for those of you who hadn't heard the first episodes that I have done in this series, I'll recap. As you know, I coach a lot of people. And of course, you've heard me coaching people live on this podcast with my Coaching with Kimmy episodes. I also have a ton of clients who I send off into the world after coaching with them. And it's really amazing and rewarding when I hear countless success stories and read thousands of emails of previous clients updating me on how their life has improved and often how they find love. And so I do these Where Are They Now episodes to inspire and motivate you by hearing what happens to people I work with after the fact. And whether that's on this podcast or working with them over time as clients. And I hope you listen to these and get inspired by people's successes and know that success can happen to you too. And they can look different for every person. And it all really starts with a call. And today I am bringing on a very special woman who I met about, gosh, I couldn't believe it when I was looking back three years ago after she hopped on a free breakthrough call to talk through her feelings of feeling very frustrated and fearful of dating. Now, as a woman in her late 40s at the time, she never had even gone on one date and didn't even know where to begin to put herself out there. And she spent most of her life focusing on her career. And she admitted she was a bit of a tomboy growing up and struggled from low self-esteem and poor body image. And she was just kind of left with this, you know, fearful feeling of rejection and not being wanted. And she decided after that phone call to invest in coaching with me in several of my programs. And because she realized she needed some direction and encouragement and a plan to help her raise her dating confidence, she had no clue how to flirt. (laughs) She admitted that and had difficulties turning on her sexy feminine side and also didn't have a group of single gals or a social life that she could practice these skills with. She also wasn't getting any action online and knew her profile needed some work. And the other challenge she had, and this was even uh, unraveled even more after we were working together, was expressing herself and learning how to emote to create vulnerability and attraction. And, And the thing that she was really wanting just for herself is to feel that sexy confidence overall and knowing that she was worth it and deserved to find love in her life. And after doing a ton of work on herself, including getting a sexy wardrobe, we definitely got her new pictures for her profile. She started learning the art of flirting and she's still learning, but she was starting to get also the conversation, you know, tricks online. She learned how to gain her sexy confidence. And with that, She got a lot more action with men. She is finally starting to see her worth and learn how to express herself and put herself first. This is, the, to me, the biggest win of of it all. But I'll let her tell the rest. Welcome, Deirdre. Are you there? I am here. Hi, Kimmy. (laughs) Hi. Oh, my God. Well, you know this, and I tell you all the time, you are so special to me and near and dear to me. And um, I, I just so enjoyed working with you over time. And I told you just now before we hit record, it was really fun <laughs> looking back on the notes. How was that? Just like hearing that. I know it. it is um, in a lot of ways. It feels very crazy because um, that was a crazy time as everybody I'm sure agrees, right? We were in the middle of the pandemic. (laughs) So it was a little bit of a crazy time to kind of make that decision about doing something. But it is hard to believe some days that it's been three years. And then at other times, it feels like it's been 10. So (laughs) (laughs) right, that's fair. No, and I think 
it is such an important thing to highlight that it was during the pandemic and in, in such a horrible time, there's also a lot of good that came out of it because people were forced to look at themselves and pull in. And it's like, what, what do I really want? And so I actually would love to go back in time where that was. And if you can remember how you were feeling and what was going on, I mean, I recap, but I'd love to hear from you. Just tell people a little bit more about who you are and what was going on then. Sure. So, I, you know, as everybody knows, we all got kind of quote unquote sent home. Right. Um, I was actually, um, I'm in a career where I didn't really get sent home. I was still working and I was actually working more. Um, and, but as a result, because everything was really shut down, that's all I was doing. I was going to work and then I was coming home after work and that was it. And, and I really didn't know how to be very good at being by myself. Um, and, and so it was kind of within all of that is taking that time to reflect about who I am and who I wanted to be. Um, and, and, you know, you talked a little bit about it, but I think it just was this realization. I was also, um, at the time, you know, like two years from turning 50. And so, it was just kind of like, hey, no, like I want to be different at 50 than I have been before. And and I don't want to be the same person. Um, I, I really, um, that was a very hard time for me. I felt very lonely. Um, 2020 was a tough year for everybody. And I recognize that. Um, but the fact that I live by myself and I live far from family, um, all those things kind of contributed to the fact that, wow, you know, I really just didn't, even though I have, you know, we all have friends, right? We say we have friends, but in the middle of a pandemic, I didn't want to open my bubble. I was in a situation for work where I could not afford to get sick. And so um, I really kept to myself. And so I spent a lot of time with myself and, and just a lot of time reflecting on who I was and what I was about and, um, and starting to kind of figure out, all right, you know, how am I going to make this work? Um, what's this going to look like if I'm going to be spending significant amounts of time with myself? So, um, you know, and, 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 so I think at that point, I just started doing a lot of that self-reflection and realizing that I didn't want to be like I was. I didn't want to be this shy woman. I didn't want to be, um, it, you know, the person that never finds a partner in life, the person that is just disconnected. I felt very disconnected for a while in there. And so um, you know, just started kind of reflecting on that and hunting for, all right, what are some ways to connect and what am I going to do different? And, um, you know, set up an online profile. I had had online dating profiles before that, but they had never had a whole lot of action, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, as you said, you made that statement, had never really been on a <laughs> date. I'm, you know, I don't like, I probably have been on a couple of dates at some point in my life, but I was not doing anything like that regularly. And so, um, you know, didn't have a lot of experience at it, didn't really know what I was doing. Um, and just, you know, I think because I was searching some of those terms and thinking through growing myself, et cetera, that I, I tripped across you on Facebook. Um, I think, and I, I don't even know how, who knows how Facebook algorithms work and come up, but, um, you know, one of your flirting classes or how to flirt that you were offering for free on Facebook came up. Um, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to check that out. What harm will that be? I'm just going to listen to somebody talk on their Facebook live. You know, it's not like I have to show myself. It's not like anybody has to know I'm the one participating. So, um, it, you know, 
Um, but I realized in, in doing that, even in doing that very first one, that there were other people out there thinking the same thing I was and reacting Uh. the same way I was. And so people making comments and I thought, well, what harm is it going to be for me to comment? I don't know any of these people, you know, I mean, that was the initial Mm -hmm. thought process for me. Like, well, I don't know any of these people. It's not going to hurt me to do, to respond. Um, and just found myself more and more like, okay, this makes sense. Oh my God. All right. Yeah, that makes sense. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, And so, um, so for me, that's really what it was during that time was just a, the loneliness and realizing I needed to make some other connections in my life. Um, And then B, figuring out that I really do want a partner and want somebody else around um and and uh, so how do I do that because I've never really done that and um for me that's just where I was at at the time yeah oh gosh thank you for sharing that and I think also if you reflect back were there like what made the thought of dating or the acts of dating or the lack there like what made it so hard for you yeah, I I really for me the the biggest thing was that um it I want to say fear of rejection but it's not quite that. It was more I literally had zero experience with it. And so what are people going to think about me? So it's it was that fear of like the perception of you know, and, and then really thinking, oh, why am I going to waste my time with her? Cause that's too much work. Right. Um, and, and not even giving other people that chance. Right. So I made it harder on myself, I'm sure than I needed to, um, because I wasn't giving anybody the chance, um, to even make that dent because I just was making assumptions about, oh, they're going to make fun of me. They're going to, you know, they're going to think this is the weirdest thing ever. They're going to assume I'm too much work. And so why should I even bother to start it and then get hurt in the long run? So, yeah. And then that, and that's what, like we were talking about too, just that fear of rejection. And when you don't have experience, like, you know, the conversation that goes on in your head, you know, about that. And, um, and that's what I, like, I was so proud of you when, especially after our first call that you kind of stepped up and said, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to do something about it. Cause that's not easy to do. Then I wondered like what, what allowed you to, to kind of leap into that and start working together? Um, so again, I, I, and I do, I, like it does go back to the pandemic in some ways, mm-hmm. right. Of a, I had more time than I normally had. Right. Cause nothing yeah. else is going on. <laughs> right. Um, so, so like all my other normal, typical activities of going to sports events and going to the theater and, you know, going out to dinner with people, none of that was going on. <laughs> none of that was happening because everything was canceled. So, um, so I had some time, Um, so that was part of it, part of it, um, you know, and, and I've, I've given this person credit, but I, at the time I had a, um, coworker, uh, who, um, was making a difference in my life, right? Like just, she was, it was a person I really like was trying to emulate, like for lack of a better word, Mm. um, but just, you know, I was so impressed with her and the the confidence she had and the attitude that she had um, during that period of time that I was like, okay, that's it. I can be like that. And she used to say that to me. Oh, you got this. Like, you're, you know, um, on a work side of things. And I think that that just gave me that extra boost and that extra push to, to say, okay, well, if I can do this at work, then I most certainly should be able to do this in my personal life. Um, and again, I do think it goes back to that. I was lonely and I just felt like I was hunting for and wanting company. Um, mm-hmm. and, and so, and it wasn't working 
the way I was doing it. So I'm like, I'm going to need somebody to help me figure out how to do this. (laughs) Well, I think what you're saying is so important and you listening, you know, like if anyone's thinking about changing any aspect of their life, I mean, usually there takes an external kind of event person situation that kind of thrusts us into making some changes, right? Because I mean, the truth is, is even before the pandemic hit, you were struggling. Sure. Right? And, and, oh, yeah. and, you know, I, right. To your, the point that you were talking about, like just, you know, focusing on work and being an introvert and having those fears of rejection, like all those things. And, you know, the perception of the pandemic kind of forcing you into like facing the loneliness, you already were feeling that, but it amplified things and allowed you to like take it to the next level and and actually do something about it. You know, I think we all have that in life and it's like that kind of external motivation that happens. And sometimes we think it's, it's a bad thing, but really in the end, you and I were talking off air about this, that something that is seemingly bad just means that it could end up being something good in the end. It's just a matter of, you know, how you look at it. And certainly that's the case with you because in that moment, it probably didn't feel great yet. Look at all the changes that have happened, which is what I wanted to ask you about. Um, well, what would you say? Like, so, and we, and we, and I know you've done different programs with me, but what were some of the skills or things that you learned along the way that you, that started really helping you with your confidence? Uh, so I think there's a few, right? So, I mean, the number one top one was doing the virtual makeover with you. Oh my God. I, that was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I obviously literally knew nothing about how to dress myself. I, like I'm on a free, I was taking bad advice from everybody else out there, obviously, um, you know, I had friends who were, you know, like, Hey, no, you know, this is what you should be wearing. This is, you know, whatever. Um, I was significant when you and I started, I was significantly overweight. Um, and, um, and just had no idea like what I should and shouldn't be wearing. And, and literally that virtual makeover with you where you were like, you should be wearing this. And, and until I went and tried it, um, like obviously you and I did it virtually. So, um, until I actually got some clothes and spent some money to buy some of those clothes and then try them on. And, um, you know, you always have your story about your red dress transformation, right? Uh Um, so I jokingly call mine, my green dress, uh, transformation. Yes. Um, and, um, you know, there, I bought a dress, which I, I won't go full on long into this story now, but I literally owned no dresses. I remember um, that. <laughs> and, um, and so, um, you know, I bought a dress, which was totally a crazy step for me to begin with. Um, but then I put that dress on and damn, if I didn't look good, right. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that word on here. Um, oh, you can but, say anything you want. <laughs> I so, um, you know, I just was like, I shocked myself with what I looked like. And then, um, you know, scheduled photos in that dress, mm-hmm. um, and got professional photos done in that dress. And, and they were okay. I actually didn't love that set of photos, but I use them still. Um, and so, um, it, for me, that just was the moment that wearing skinny jeans, like what the heck was that? I never ever would have thought like I was wearing freaking bell bottoms because (laughs) that's what I assumed I needed to wear because I was on the heavier side and, and just, you know, so you teaching me about the type of body I have about what looks good on that, about what colors to wear, uh, like all that kind of stuff. Like literally my entire wardrobe has changed in the last three years. (laughs) So, um, and, and I don't even, I don't, like, if I were to go in my closet, I might have two things that are prints anymore, but, um, <laughs> you know, so, 
between the green dress and a pair of red pants that were skinny pants, um, it, you know, really had really transformed my mindset and, and started helping me understand and know like, no, I can be sexy and I look great in these things. Um, and, and, you know, you touched on what I had told you at the very beginning about having pretty low, um, low body self-esteem. I've Mm -hmm. been a big, I was a big kid my entire life. I'm almost six feet tall, which, you know, is a giant in most people's standards. So, um, and I'm not just tall, I'm also big. So, so it, you know, and, and have been my entire life. And so, um, and got teased a lot as a kid for that. And, and so I think that that, that just translates for people, um, that haven't had success in other kinds of a dating relationship. Like in my head, I always brought that back and associated that back to what I look like, whether, that's real or not. So now I feel like I've I've made that transformation to understand they're not connected. They're not associated. There are plenty of men out there that appreciate a tall woman and a woman with curves. Um, or so I've been told since now I've been on dates. (laughs) Um, you know, so, so I think, but I think that that, that green dress moment, the red pants moment, Mm -hmm. um, changing my, my wardrobe was a giant step for me. It really was. And I mean, you were the quintessential model of what I refer to as the outside in, you know, kind of uh, Uh formula that really, like you just exemplified how powerful it was, you know, from, you know, the external shifts that you made and then how that internally affected you. Cause I would love for you to touch upon from there. Then what are some other things that you started learning and, and worked for you? Yeah. So I, you know, I think just, um, even, you know, the flirting skills and the different formulas that you like to talk about in terms of, you know, everything. So, um, just putting together the conversation skills and the style and the body language and the, you know, knowing where do I sit when I go out? Like, you know, I was the one who went and took the table in the corner. (laughs) You know, (laughs) Um, so the fact that I'm even willing to go and tell my friend, hey, let's just go sit at the bar tonight. You know, like that's never like literally never something I would have done before. So, um, you know, just learning to do some of those things um, has really just changed um, kind of, you know, my own demeanor and the the way that I act. And, um, you know, I find myself even changing like where I stand when I'm talking to people in a room, even if it's work related. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of those kinds of changes really made a difference. And those are all skills that I attribute to things I've learned from you from the various different things I've attended with you. But, um, you know, those are all definitely that being, and again, being more comfortable in myself and in who I am and realizing that I offer value and that, you know, that I do have something to offer to anybody. It doesn't matter who they are. It doesn't matter if their perspective love match or not. Um, it, it's just anybody. And I think that the other piece is learning just to have some fun with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, you talk a lot about having fun and um, I'm not going to say I never had fun, but I didn't always make it playful and fun. Um, I, you know, I was the classic, let's treat this like an interview because that's what I was good at and knew how to yeah. do. <laughs> uh, you know. right? So, yeah. um, you know, learning to not do that, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, learning to just have good conversation about anything and everything and not make it all just, well, what do you do for a living? Well, what kind of music do you like? Well, you know, and make it this big, long page of questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh my God. I am, I'm smiling because as you're talking, I'm reflecting on a time I'll never forget because you started getting like more action online. And I remember how excited you were, like when you started having some DM exchanges, remember that? Like in the beginning. Yes. Yep. And then it was almost like a good problem to have because you would start getting these exchanges that would go on for days. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I remember that guy who like, I'm like, Deirdre, like, this isn't a pen pal, like get on the phone with him, <laughs> you know? And that was like right. another skill I remember you and I kind of working on is the art of conversation too, is like, it was like first even having a conversation, but then once you're in it, how do you flow? How do you have fun? How do you make them want more? How do you get to the date? Like all those kind of steps. And then even getting to where you started having dates, which was like huge. Right. Yeah, no, definitely. And, you know, I've been on some awesome ones and I've been on some pretty crappy ones. Uh (laughs) (laughs) You know, I mean, I think everybody, everybody relates to that, I assume, but, uh, you know, so yeah. And I think just teaching myself that it's not the end result, um, you know, that, that to, to give up, to not assume it, it's this to not assume that every guy is going to be in the long-term relationship. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I was before I met you, that's how I dated. If I was going to go on a date, it was because there was actually some kind of potential and I wanted that to be long-term or whatever, you know? And so I think just learning to date for the sake of dating to, to kind of yes. just be more fun and be more playful and, you know, early on, that was my mission. I just wanted to go on at least one day a month. Like that was, that was the goal, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, um, so yeah, learning how to get to that point took time. That was something I had to learn too. Um, cause it, it's not like it just happens out of magic and out of the air. So, um, yeah, you and, know, and, and we were in a time where we weren't being very good about meeting people organically mm-hmm. We Mm -hmm. still weren't really getting together with people. So, um, you know, so, so it's nice now because now there's more opportunities to meet people because we're back to doing networking events and attending sporting events and, you know, some of those kinds of things, that ability to, you know, go out on a date and actually go somewhere and be with people and et cetera. So Absolutely. And if you think about it, like how amazing is it that you kind of conquered all these skills, you know, in, in a pandemic, you know, right. that it, it it's really profound to hear all the, you know, kind of traction you got <laughs> because you did the work. I mean, and that's the bottom line is like, even you listening to this, like Deirdre did the work and you got to the point where you wanted to change and saw, started seeing the results from it. You know, there's one skill that I know you've grown tremendously, and I know that you're still working on it as we all do, but um, that vulnerability piece and learning how to just express yourself. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah. You know, I, I think that that was one of the hardest parts for me and, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I, I'm a very typical Gen Xer where, you know, we were taught to grin and bear it a lot. Uh, I, I talked a lot to other people I know who were in similar situations growing up, you know, where you were latchkey kids and mom and dad were both at work and um, you kind of raised yourselves a little bit. Um, and there wasn't a whole lot of touchy feely kind of stuff for me growing up. And so learning to express my feelings and learning that that's okay to do that. And somebody's not going to tell me to just grin and bear it or buck up and deal with it or, you know, anything along those lines, um, you know, that it was tough for me to learn that that was okay. And to be that vulnerable with people. Um, and, and I think it still goes back to that, that fear of being made fun of and fear of rejection that you don't want to open up to people and admit like all the inconsistencies or whatever. For me, the biggest issue has been, and still will continue to be the inexperience in all of this, you know, and, being able to open up and share that with people 
is a different feeling. Um, and you know, it's funny cause I, I told you before we started recording that yeah. I had an event tonight and just, I was able to tell people that I was doing this podcast, <laughs> like just, just being able to do that and to be vulnerable enough to, to know that all your followers and all your listeners are going to hear me <laughs> opening up and talking about myself. Mm. Um, you know, it's scary. It's a little scary, but I've realized that for me, like this is a massive step for me. Um, and, uh, you know, and even though it's scary and feels weird, it also in some ways for me feels really good to be excited about that and to, and to be okay with telling people that and realizing that people think it's cool and awesome and they're not rejecting me and they're not telling me I'm weird and whatever. So, um, you know, that really has made a difference. I think I, you know, in, in some, you know, people that I've dated, like being able to open up and talk about some of the inexperience and some of that stuff, has actually been a godsend in some ways because it's made me more comfortable. Um, you know, each time I talk about some of those things makes me that much more comfortable to talk about it again. Um, and so um, it, it's, as you said, it's something I'm still working on. I'm still learning, um, feeling words and understanding the difference between feeling words and talking very matter of fact, because I'm a very matter of fact kind of person, but, uh, you know, so learning to do that is still a work in progress. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But with, but with all of this that you shared, like from the flirting efforts to your new wardrobe, to being more open to going out and being social and not being so serious to your vulnerability and authenticity and learning that how has your life changed? Like, what does it look like now? (laughs) You know, it's kind of funny because sometimes when I think about it, like the life's not really all that different. I just feel different. Yeah. Right. And so, so, you know, it, it's, a, uh, it, and I'm like, it's really, it's actually, I'm like trying to think about the right words to even say, but, you know, I, I do think that I'm much more open and aware um, of even attention period, Mm -hmm. um, than I was ever before, you know, and that's a skill that you talk about that you talked about early, early on in some of my trainings with you that, um, and discussions with you just, you know, that you have to be aware of other people watching you. (laughs) (laughs) Right. And, and I definitely was not, I was very much a blinders on, let me just get down the street. Let me just make it through the grocery store in 10 minutes flat and out again. (laughs) You know, (laughs) Um, and, and there are days where I'm still like that, but there are lots more days where I'm much more aware. Um, I, you know, um, I, I think I walk different. I carry myself different. That's been noted to me by other people. Um, and so I may not have been aware of it, but other people know it. So I'm like, okay, I guess I am, <laughs> uh, you know, so um, I, I think just that, that ability to say, you know what, I can attract a great guy. Um, I can have fun on a date. I, it doesn't have to mean anything. It doesn't have to have an end result. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all those things all contribute to, to being different than I was. I'm I'm much more likely to be okay with going up and chatting somebody up and talking to somebody. Um, and, and that's not something I ever would have done before. Um, you know, um, I, you know, I actually just, I booked a trip. I'm going on a trip mm-hmm. later this month. Um, and I do actually now have, you know, two other women who decided to join me. But originally when I booked it, I was going by myself. Mm -hmm. Um, And the fact that I'd even consider going to another country by myself is like a massive step. Like that's a crazy major step. So, uh, you know, so I think for me, just, 
I am I am a different person than I was three years ago. Um, and I think that all of the experiences that came as a result of all the skills I've learned have all contributed to that. So, uh, yeah. It's so beautiful. It's like I tell people all the time, I mean, yes, people find love with someone else and there's so many different like ways you can find love and what relationships look like. But at the end of the day, falling in love with yourself is the greatest love of all. Because from there, anything can happen. And the love with someone else is going to be that much more powerful. And I think what you're speaking to is simply that, like, just really seeing your worth and 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 that confidence that you're having is beautiful. And I will say, and this is total evidence of that, is that it was almost like a graduation for you to come to my last retreat, Dating Reimagined, where I actually saw you for the first time in person. Like that was super amazing experience because we have been doing things virtually this whole time, right? And to see you in the flesh and moving through the room and socializing with everyone. And it already had a wing girl outing with one of the members before you even got there. And listening to the feedback from the men in there, how they saw you as this very outgoing social person, like what a true testament to like how other people are seeing you too now. Yeah, no, definitely. And like I said, I mean, even people who have been in my life for that entire period of time have noted that I seem to carry myself differently. So, um, so, so yeah, no. And I, again, I mean, I, you know, it's kind of funny because in some ways to myself, I joke, yeah, the whole reason I came on the retreat was to meet Kim in person. <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever but, motivated you, but. <laughs> never mind the things I learned while I was there, but. Right, I, right, right. Know, it was all about me. <laughs> there are other benefits to it, but, <laughs> um, you know, but, uh, but that, uh, that just that opportunity and that opportunity to interact with other people, um, you know, was super beneficial for me because I think because so much of it had been online, it's not the same. Like a Zoom class is just not the same um, as an interaction in person. And so, um, and, and that's the same thing about dating or the same thing about wing girls. It's, you know, it's just not the same online as it is in person. And so having that opportunity, um, you know, and again, it's, it's that I've learned how to do things differently, you know, for myself, you know, um, ain't nothing like the real thing as they say. And, and let's not forget the fact, and this is like, I'd say the biggest thing that we forgot to talk about the fact that you had dated a couple guys now more than one date. Like, let's just leave it at that. Like, you know, right. Yeah, that's no, huge. Exactly. Like, what's that? <laughs> and because I of all these never efforts, been on the first date before, so exactly. Yeah. I mean, that that you know, and it, it it was all cumulative because you're feeling better and because you learned all this. You now have experience with a couple men than more than one date that you, you know, really like experienced, and you know, that happens you know, to people in different parts of their life. But when I first met you, you, you didn't ever even have that. So yeah, huge. Yes, no. And that is huge. And, and those have both been big learning experiences in and of themselves. So, you know, it's, it's, um, you know, that that's the next step. All right. How do I, that's right do this how do I make this work you know right how do I learn how to break up with somebody I had never done that before (laughs) right you know that's a new experience and that's a different Mm -hmm. experience too so oh well I mean we could go on and on and on but it it was so fun going down memory lane with you and um what I love about these episodes too is that you'll always have it you know for you to reflect on because To your point, we're always growing. We're always learning. There's always a next phase, you know? And so 
I, I just hope this is a reminder to you of how much you have accomplished and successes really have lied within so much of you. Um, and it's just going to keep growing from here. So Deirdre, thank you so much for coming on and sharing this. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. I, I appreciate, well, I appreciate any chance I get to talk to you. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I have you, and I guess for closing, um, what would you say to someone who was like kind of where you were at and listening to this and they're kind of like wavering, you know, and they're not sure whether or not to hop on a call or invest in themselves. What, is there anything that like helped you or that you could help others and help helping them really with that? Yeah. So obviously that's such a personal decision for people and such a personal choice. Right. And I think, but I do think, you know, if, if you are a person who feels like you're ready to take that step, um, first of all, like, following the podcast, following the stuff on Instagram or Facebook, you know, jumping on those calls when there's opportunities for, um, especially, you know, for free things. I mean, I started out because it was a free flirting course over the course of like four days on Facebook Mm -hmm. or something like that. So, um, you know, that all that's worth it. And then, and then, yeah, I mean, I think for me, I just made a decision at some point that, you know what, I'm worth it. Mm -hmm. And, and if I, that, that there is value to put toward making myself different and better, um, that's the way I saw it at the time. And so for me, the value of that was worth investing in myself um, and and doing that. You know, it, we we have lots of choices we can make every day about what we choose to invest in, right? And so, um, and for me, it was important for me to invest in myself. And, um, you know, uh, this type of coaching for me has been like, I, like it's almost priceless at this point because I don't know how to put a price on that um, because I'm so different. And so, um, so yeah, I, I think for me, that's the biggest thing. And, and so in my opinion, it's worth it. Uh, I would tell anybody that was in that same situation I was in to just do it. Um, there's a lot of fear, obviously, in, in investing in ourselves sometimes. But, um, you know, think about what else you might be spending your money on and investing in and, and and make that list and figure out, is that equivalent? I mean, are you, you know, are you out there buying the $10 Starbucks every day? Well, there you go, 300 bucks extra you got at the end of the month if you don't do that. So um, everybody makes those choices about where and how they um, want to spend their money and invest their um, their, do- their time and their dollars because there's time involved in the work on yourself too. But, um, you know, and I'm still working on that. I we You and I have joked about, I have an alarm. It goes off at work every day at 520. <laughs> it, like, get out. You know, that's pretty much what it says. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, and again, that's a choice that I'm making to invest in myself. Um, that why am I sitting at work till 7 p.m.? I don't need to do that. Like, get out. So, um, it, you know, those are those are the choices that we all have to make to figure it out. In my opinion, it's worth it to invest in yourself. <laughs> so <laughs> it made a difference for me. So I believe it can make a difference for other people. <laughs> so beautiful what you just said. And, and it's so meta to what we're talking about because, you know, like if, especially if you're struggling with your self-worth, what if for the first time you invested in yourself to prove to yourself that you're worth it? it it's almost like the catapult of, of all of this that has happened to you, you know, and the, just thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your story, for, for investing and committing to yourself. And that's why like you're doing so amazing. And I just, I can't wait to, to see where you're going to end up. Cause I, I know it's just going to keep growing. Yeah. Yep. No. And again, I like, I owe it a, a lot of it to you. So. <laughs> 
Well, Deidre, again, I adore you. Thank you so much for coming on. So thanks for joining me today. This has been the Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, of course, Kimmy Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. And if you were listening to Deidre's story and related to feeling frumpy and not very sexy in your dating life, I have something for you that will jumpstart you feeling more confident in this area of your life. And remember, it only takes seven seconds to make a first impression. That's all you got. And people are making judgments and assumptions based on two things, the clothes you wear and the attitude that you have. And that can determine how potential dates see and treat you. That's why I want to help you look and feel your best so you can attract what you want, both in your dating and life. So just head over to KimmySeltzer.com forward slash style and download my free style guides. It's my body shape guide for women and the man's fashion manifesto. So these guides will help you determine your body type, what clothes flatter your figure and provides a specific fashion tip for you so that you feel that sexy confidence in your clothes and body. And you'll also learn about my upcoming Stop Hating Dating Workshop, all about finding your style and body confidence. And don't let another second go by feeling anything less than amazing. So go to KimmySeltzer.com forward slash style and become the confident and stylish person you know you can be. And who knows, maybe you'll be that next success story on my podcast after doing all this work. Remember, working on you is working on your dating life. That's all for now.